Good morning and welcome to Unity Way Church. My name is Reverend Michael Schoonover and I'm the minister here at Unity Way Church in beautiful, sunny Vista, California. I invite you to our YouTube channel and our YouTube service this morning and I want to wish you a happy Halloween and I know this is going to be a great day for you as we go into the Halloween week. A lot of spiritual nuggets we can glean out of the tradition of Halloween from a truth perspective. I invite you now to join with me in our Wings of Prayer affirmation, and this is from Daily Word. This is September the 7th, 1939. Christ in me greets and loves and praises Christ in every person. Just invite you to allow that divine idea, Christ within us. We are that divine image and divine likeness of absolute perfection and truth. And the reason why we have incarnated onto this third dimensional plane is to reawaken to that truth, live it and enjoy it with the experiences that it will bring as we unfold within ourselves the divinity more and more more. And we know that to be true. Unity Way Church is a metaphysical church, which means we study consciousness. What we think and what we feel and what we image quite a bit or habitually will eventually become part of of our everyday experience. So metaphysics offers us tools that we can use to change our life. As a good unity church, we affirm only one presence and one power, one life and one substance. And we know that all is good and very good. And if you believe that high truth understanding with me, I invite you to use the mantra we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now here is Nita with our daily word. Good morning. The word for today is creative. And the affirmation is, the creative energy of spirit expresses through me. Stunning visual arts, inspirational music, a brilliant performance, these are all lovely examples of creativity, but they are by no means the only ones. Creativity is the very nature of life, from the most soaring, soul-inspiring instance to the mundane moments that fill daily life. Creative acts abound. Creative activities are prayers in action, a continuation of divine activity in its infinite manifestations. Living is a creative act. It's the way I am in the world, the way I love, and the way I relate to all others. Understanding it this way, I see how I am using my thoughts feelings, and imagination to create my experiences. I bring my divine gifts to life through my creativity. And from Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. And the affirmation once again is, The creative energy of spirit expresses through me. Thank you, Nita. We truly are creative beings. Again, because we're created in the sacred image and likeness of spirit. Right now, I'd like to sync up with Silent Unity, a divine idea that was birthed by our co-founders, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. So right now, back at Unity Village in the Silent Unity Chapel, there is a prayer worker holding that high watch for answered prayer, and in front of them are all the prayer claims on that altar, and our prayer claims are there also. We believe as good, true students that our prayers do outpicture exactly the way they're supposed to in our own lives, and we know that to be so. I'd like to bless that setting, I'd like to bless the prayers, I'd like to bless that prayer worker, and I'd like to bless that divine idea, silent unity, and that silent unity chapel back in Missouri, at Unity Village, we know it's a sacred place. We're anchored there in consciousness. And by the power of omnipresence, I'd like to bring some of that healing and mystical energy from that divine setting in the silent Unity Chapel and bring it forth into the sanctuary. And as it floods this room and goes out and over our property, may you know right now that you are divine. May you know that all that you need to have the life that you dream about, 
that you truly want is available to you. If we are, if we're awake and we know how to use our consciousness in the proper way. And if you believe again that high truth understanding, I invite you to use a mantra we use here at our church every Sunday, which is thank you God, and so it is. Amen. Well, 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 since it's going to be Halloween this next next this next week coming up, I thought I'd pick a little Halloweenish uh, comic. And as you can see, it's bam, you can see. And there's a witch. She hit a power pole and she has this huge broom on the one side. And there's a little caption and it says GPS. Oh, you know, that is so funny. Come on. Her. She got her. She got her directions mixed up there. Oh, that is so funny. We need to laugh more. I believe part of Halloween is uh, living in that the time of, of, you know, just kind of not being childish, but just having a childlike understanding of what Halloween could mean to each and every one of us, for each and every one of us. I'd like to share some uh, jokes with you from my minister's joke page. Oh, I picked out some really good ones, so please stay in your chair and fasten your seatbelt. The first one is, well, it's just one story. It's a boy was waiting for his mother outside a grocery store. Uh, he was approached by a man who asked, Can you uh, tell me, young man, where the post office is in town? He said, Sure. Uh, go straight down this street after three blocks turn right the man said oh thank you thank you and he said I don't know if you know this but I'm the new pastor in town do you want to come to church on Sunday to see me I'll show you how to uh, get to heaven if you do and the boy was puzzled for a second and said uh, I don't think so you don't even know your way to the post office oh come 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 tickle that funny bone we need to laugh more we need to laugh more this morning my talk title is Halloween re-explored we're going to re-explore kind of go back into history kind of the the original uh, components of Halloween and bring it forward and really looking at this day as a Halloween day a day of expression a day how we're showing up we're going to be talking about that as we go forward to my talk I'd like to open up with uh, some wisdom from an unknown sage and it is when black cats prowl and pumpkins gleam May luck be yours on Halloween. Oh, I love, I love, I just love it. A little bit of history about Halloween goblins. Ooh, there are those scary European folklore tales that we heard growing up. Goblins are creatures, really, that were go back to or dated to the uh, Middle and Dark Ages. So the idea of goblins and ghosts, you know, things happening from the astral plane coming into this dimension uh, this particular time because the veil is thinner. Uh, pumpkins, a little bit, you know, we, talk, we deal with pumpkins because we have jack-o'-lanterns. I'd like to share with you that the pumpkin capital of the world is in the United States. It is in the state of Illinois, and it's Morton. Morton is where most of all the pumpkins are grown or come from. 95% of the U.S. pumpkins come from the state of Illinois, too. So Illinois is just not the land of Lincoln. It's also the land of pumpkins. I also want to share with you pumpkins. Pumpkins each have around 500 seeds. That's a lot of seeds. Uh, I want to say that pumpkins first appeared in the Cinderella story, and it was the fruit that Cinderella's fairy godmother trans uh, transformed into her famous carriage. And I know sometime we've seen that Disney where the pumpkin turned into that beautiful carriage. That's called imagination. That's called re-exploring uh, these ideas. And again, I think it's interesting how we take things in everyday life or seasonal things, whether they're fruit or vegetables or things, and we incorporate them into the lure of our own vernacular, of the tales that we say, the myths that we say, the truth that we share. Very much, again, related to where we are and where we live and the cultural understanding. So if you're from an agricultural society, this would be very, very common. Over 1.5 billion pounds of 
pumpkins are produced yearly. That's a lot of pumpkin pie or pumpkin pudding. So, and I love, I do love pumpkin. The oldest pumpkin seeds are found or were found in the highlands of Oaxaca, Mexico. That's on the interior side, or uh, yeah, on the interior side. And the oldest seeds that they found, again, in the Oaxaca highlands are over 7,000, over 7,500 years old. Those are some old seeds. Those are some old seeds. Pumpkins have many uses. When I was researching my talk for Halloween about pumpkins, uh, they have many things that they can help you with. One of them is it, if you use pumpkin and rub pumpkin the pulp on your freckles, it'll take away your freckles. I also want to share with you, you can brush your teeth with the pumpkin pulp, make it into a little paste. Also, pumpkins are 90% water, so you know there's a lot of water in those pumpkins. Uh, Halloween, the celebration of Halloween in October, is the second highest uh, commercial holiday after Christmas. So a lot of energy and money and the fun of Halloween is there. And I, and I want to say that too. Halloween can have some of the darker things. You know, I grew up with Halloween with Norman Vincent Price where he would, you know, be the house of Haunted Hill and you know they dangle the, they dangle the skeleton but you could see the wires if you look real close. I'm not really talking about the gory stuff. Uh, that's out there too. But I'm talking about the traditional understanding of Halloween. Oh, I didn't see you. You, you're a ghost. That kind of fun that we had as kids. Carving pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns jack is a Halloween tradition and it originated hundreds of years ago in Ireland. Yes, it did. Trick or treat. Where did you ever hear that phrase? Trick or treat. Trick or treat is a Celtic tradition of putting out treats and food to appease the spirits who roam the streets. And it's a sacred festival marking the end of the Celtic calendar year. Many people don't realize that October was the end of the year. They didn't have 12 months. And also they didn't have 52 weeks in their calendar years either. So again, interesting too. So when we say in scripture, that people live 600 years, they might have lived 600 years, but again, they weren't living in a, a calendar where there's 12 months or there were uh, 52 weeks, something to take into our understanding. And this is from the Hebrew scriptures. This is the great, great book of Psalms, chapter four, verse six. There are some who ask, who will be good to us? Let your kindness, Lord, shine brightly on us. As we go into this holiday season of Halloween, you know, however you're going to uh, express it or share it, or if you do or you don't, the Lord is the law within us. It's about kindness. That's really the origins of this. Anyone who really looks metaphysically at the idea of Halloween, you get together. We always had a we wisdom Halloween issue. So Charles and Myrtle were very much into the idea of Halloween. I think sometimes, again, you can go to the way to the side, you know, where things were gory or are gory. I'm not talking about that. I mean, if that's what you want to do, that's your business. But the idea of a kids dressing up as ghosts, knocking at the door, trick or treat, there's nothing really in inherently wrong with that. And I believe metaphysically it's a time where we can rediscover where are we scaring ourselves? Where are we not showing up with the divinity that we know we have? Many of our Halloween activities and traditions really can be traced back to the Middle Ages and also shaman rituals. And those are those the not soothsayers, I guess you could say. They're the people that were the priests of that time, and they're the ones who had that religious understanding that when people die, they really don't die. They go to another dimension because energy doesn't die. They they know life is eternal. Maybe uh, we don't see them, but that doesn't mean they're not with us. Again, this is a time when phantoms walk the earth on a shaman night. People dressed up in costumes in an effort to repel the spirits. So there's a little fun in there. And you know, the weather's getting a little bit colder, a little bit darker sooner. It's, 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 it should be fun. And I believe as true students, we can reimagine it and make Halloween exactly what we want it to be. This is from Sarah Evers. Some people have swimming pools 
others have private cemeteries. It can happen, and you know that's a joke, but metaphysically, we do have some uh, private cemeteries within us. That's where our dead ideas are. Hopefully, we let those dead ideas, uh, behaviors that we've left behind that no longer serve us, maybe our judgmental side of us, our place that we, uh, we have a sharp tongue. So maybe we need to revisit that, and we realize metaphysically there are places we need to let the dead bury the dead. We need to let negative talk stay in the cemetery. In old English folklore, is full of a lot of superstition and fortune telling, like bobbing for apples and a trying to avoid black cats. You know what I'm talking about. Again, let's find the fun in Halloween, the truth of Halloween for us individually this year. This is from H.P. Lovecraft. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. We all have had that feeling or, or that tremor of oh, catching our breath because some things we don't know all the answers right now. Things will unfold within us. And I think if you look at Halloween really uh, metaphysically is that it's a time for us to deal with maybe some of the skeletons of our negative thoughts or feelings or images of our past or of our future and leave them, leave them behind. Because if they're negative and we don't want to bring them forward, then we need to keep them out of our consciousness and we definitely can do that. In my research, I found that uh, candy corn was called originally, you know, candy corn, the little candy they put in the, in the uh, trick-or-treat bags. Candy corn was called chicken feed. It was created in the 1880s by George Reining. Uh, it was sold to the masses by Glotis uh, Confectionery Company. It's called, now called the Jelly Bean Company. Uh, at the turn of the century. So candy corn has been around for a long, long time. Again, corn is used or was used uh, to feed chickens. That's why they called it chicken feed originally. And uh, the original box of candy corn uh, had this color for a rooster. It was in like a rooster box. I bet you didn't know that. But again, it's interesting. Again, the candy in the image goes to a practical thing in life. So if you, everyone had chickens back in those days and you had to feed the chicken and of course, a lot of individuals in the feed would feed them corn. This is from that TV series, I'm sure you remember, kind of like the Munsters, but this is the Adams family and this is the wife. And Mrs. Adams shares this insight. If I'd known you were coming, I could have made up the dungeon. You know that is so funny. Come on, you remember the Adams family. You remember, uh, it was that time, it's just something very special. Uh, to, to get into that, a uh, different way of looking at life. And that was something that happened in the late 60s. Uh, Adams family was only on for one year, sadly. But uh, the day of the dead kind of gets into some of the shamanic, shaman, shaman understanding of this. The day of the dead is October 31st and through November 2nd in Mexico and other Hispanic countries. November 1st honors children who died. Family members decorate their graves with baby breaths and wild orchids. On November the 2nd, families honor adults who died by placing oranges and marigolds all over the grave sites. And that's a activity of honor. In my research too, the original Aztec celebration lasted for over a month. But when the Spanish came over uh, to Mexico in the 16th century, they merged the festival, the Aztec festival, with the Catholic All Saints Day. So today, they, there's a celebration that's mixed with Aztec rituals and also skulls and altars to the dead in food and also Catholic masses and Catholic prayers. I'd call that a Halloween mishmash right there but if you really understand that it's a culture of the people and that's why they did that. This is from David R. Hawkins. The ultimate is the realm of non-form non-limitation and non-locality. Therefore, it is the realm of the totality of the ever-present all. There is only existence. 
Existence requires no cause in to think as much is to create a fallacy of logic. Again, we need to realize we're conscious beings, but it is. We don't create reality. We become aware of reality as we move and live and have our being in this dimension, which again is really the basic components of metaphysical thinking. We are the things that others and ourself fear. This Sunday, I invite you, where do you fear? Where are your fears within you? Could be a bank in a payment. Could be it. Could be anything. Do you have a you have an allergy? You something that's coming up. Something you really don't want to do. You're going to a new gym. I mean, it could be anything. We all deal with with fears on some level. Maybe this is the week we can really think. We well, let's face those fears or stresses as they're called today, and figure out how we can move through those episodes within our life and really live the life that we have come to want to live right here and right now. And I'd like to share a couple stories with you. This is about some hotels that are near Monticello where Thomas Jefferson's house was. It is Thomas Jefferson's ghost. Yes, Thomas Jefferson's ghost is roaming all around the hotels around uh, Monticello. And at night, it can be very scary. And you might even consider canceling your Halloween plans at night because he's roaming around. These are true stories. Uh, tips for avoiding this translucent Tom, uh, Thomas Jefferson ghost because he's still around his plantation, they say, even at these hotels within the vicinity of Montes Monticello. If you see white flakes on the floor, run. Uh, it's not snow. It's the dandruff falling uh, off uh, his wig, his powdered wig. And you know all the old, in those days, the men used to wear powdered wigs. Yeah, I tell you, you just can't make this stuff up. Uh, that means he's very close if you see uh, the dustings on the carpet. They also suggest if you're going to stay in a hotel during this time of Halloween, the end of October, carry a nickel. If you happen to run into Jefferson, he'll take that, that trusty nickel. Jefferson loved money and his self-love will distract you long enough so you can escape if he's around you. Again, also they're saying stay clear of any and all Jefferson statues on Halloween because if you walk in, if you're walking near the statues, people have heard a voice near the statue where Jefferson actually was complaining because they said his nose was too big in the statue. He didn't that nose didn't match his real nose and he said his iron pants made his rump look too big. Can't make this stuff up. Trust me, keep walking faster. So if you think you're going to run into Thomas Jefferson's ghost, keep on moving. Keep on moving. This is from uh, uh, Stephen Colbert. Was deciding if I should dress as Batman or Spider-Man for Halloween. He's asking this question. When I realize I'm a grown man, so it's Batman. And I, I like that idea because Halloween is a time where you go to a costume party or, you know, you watch a funny movie or a Halloween movie or something. You can make Halloween what you want it to be. And metaphysically, it's a time to reevaluate the, the personalities that we have. Are we living from our individual? Individuality, understanding of who we are, or are we living from our only our personality, which is usually tainted by our ego, and sometimes can be selfish, and sometimes can be petty, and sometimes can be impatient. Something we can think about on Halloween. Let's peel that mask off and live the life that we choose to live. A lot of folk folklore when I was doing my research for this talk. It says, and I thought this was very good, an unmarried person who can walk, will walk down a, a flight of stairs backwards, uh, holding a mirror. If you look at the mirror as you're walking down backwards, you will see a face that will appear in this mirror as you're walking down backwards down these stairs. Uh, be careful because the person you see is going to be your next romantic love. Think about that. I don't know if I'd want to walk anywhere downstairs with a mirror. It's kind of dangerous if you ask me. And again, it's kind of superstition. It's one of those kind of wives tales. Kind of like a Halloween tale. So I don't advise you walking down any stairs backwards uh, with a mirror. No, I don't, because that's kind of dangerous. But those are some of the things, and superstitions usually have roots in some type of truth or myth somewhere. And the more we believe it to be so, the more real they become to us. This is from Douglas Copeland. 
If human beings had genuine courage, they'd wear their costumes every day of the year, not just on Halloween. And I believe that. I think many times we think we're much better actors. We play these charades. People know because people realize the energy that you're showing up with. Uh, are, are you being pompous? Are you being overly self-reflective? Are you being depressed? Are you being arrogant? Or are you being authentic? And I think, again, that's one of the themes I think that Halloween can give us. Are we willing to live in the moment? Are we willing to change? Are we willing to laugh at ourselves? Are we willing to review actions that maybe we need to change this? Maybe we need to make a switch or a turn somewhere. And we can do that on Halloween and we can do it with fun. We can do it with a chuckle in our heart. And to me, that's really what a truth understanding a Halloween can mean does. Again, the Catholic Church blended the pagan festivals with church holidays, which is all uh, Souls Day. And that is the day where their souling, it's an act, was very popular, where poor children would uh, go, to di go to different houses door to door, dressed as spirits or saints, accepting food in exchange for prayer. So there's a lot that goes back into that understanding. Uh, there, you know, it goes seated, it's seated back in consciousness. And I think all of us in some level uh, who have not understand our immortality have been afraid of death, been afraid of things that just happen, and been afraid of the dark, I think. And really the dark is just the light, same energy at a different frequency. And that's what truth teaches us. Now back to some of those hotels around Monticello. Uh, if your hotel room is on the lawn, close your blinds. Because along, the, his, along with his titles, he's also known as the father of the universities. He's also was a U.S. president, you know. What they're saying, and what I read, is Jefferson the ghost is known to be called, what they called, a peeping Thomas. He would peek through the blinds or the curtains. So keep your windows shut and your doors locked. If someone knocks on your door, say, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Not trick or treat, because you don't want to bring that on. I'm having some fun here. Don't answer them. Dressing up as a famous historical figure uh, might get you into trouble too. Role playing as uh, George Washington or Alexander Hamilton will will ensure you get a good talking to from Jefferson because they weren't always that close to them. Uh, meanwhile, if you dress up as James Madison or Jefferson himself, you might get a you might get a one night stand to see that ghost visit you wherever you are while you're staying in the vicinity of Monticello. And my friends, again, when I was doing research, it said avoid all lawn encounters with Jefferson as his ghost is known to be running in his his knickers uh, stay safe on halloween a little bit of fun there we do know that there is a spirit world we do know that there's an astral plane but we don't have to be afraid of it if we realize that we're the truth we can overcome anything there's nothing to be really afraid of there's nothing really to be scared of. What we need to do is remember who we are and just know that that's part of the journey. We're immortal and there's some things we don't know at this juncture of our life. But on the other side, we see the full picture and everything happens for a reason. This is from the great American writer, uh, Mark Twain. Everyone is a moon and has a dark side which he never shows to anybody. And what I like about that wisdom is because we have a short fuse, we've showed up maybe too childish. We've gotten over upset when things didn't work out right or we popped a button or we dropped something. It can happen. It can happen. But maybe this Halloween we can step back and re-examine it and say, how can I allow this day to lighten my life up? not take life so seriously. Laughing at myself. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. None of the people we're around are perfect, but we live in that frequency of love. I want to share a tradition that's in Des Moines. It's a tradition called Beggar's Night. The night before Halloween, the young children of Des Moines uh, hit the streets for a beggar's night. And this began in 1938 as a way to prevent vandalism and a safer way to enjoy Halloween. So this way, the city kind of started this. And again, this is beggar's night, 1938, not that long ago. This is from the New Testament. This is Paul's letter to the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter two, verse four. 
uh, God bearing witness with them both by signs and wonders and by various miracles and uh, distributions of the Holy Spirit according to his will. We are here to stand firm in who we are. We are here not to live in fear. We are here not to live in, an, in anxiety. We are here to live the life that we choose. Now, if we choose to live in fear, in anxiety, oh, yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. We can have insomnia. We can have a lot of things, jinxes happen, have these mishappenings. But we don't have to when we've remembered who we are. And this is the time as we go back to our individuality, which is we allow our soul really to chart the destiny and our, we allow our soul to really be the real mask that we're wearing. Because we all wear one mask, it's called the Christ, and it's always there available to us. A little bit more about that beggar's night in Iowa. Uh, the beggar's night is very, uh, very similar to a regular trick-or-treating event, except the kids are required to tell a joke or a poem or perform, or perform a trick-or-treat act or something. Also, jokes are notoriously grown-worthy, like this one, of the, this, if you go to a door, you knock on, knock on the door and you say, if April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? I don't know. Oh, that's just what I read in the research. This is from Catherine McPee. I love the spirit of Halloween and the energy that comes with it. Again, we're looking at the essence of Halloween. Again, not taking ourselves so seriously. Realizing that we're showing up almost every day of our life wearing a mask. And we want to make sure our personality is again in alignment with the divinity within us. Found out some other interesting information, too. Our White House is haunted. I bet you didn't know that. Yes, spirits roam the halls at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Yes, there have been many ghostly reports and appearances, not only of ghosts, but also of eerie sounds that go in the night. Uh, the common ghost sightings are, of course, you would think, are Abraham Lincoln. And actually, Abraham Lincoln was spotted by First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt more than once. Also, when the visiting Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands also saw Abraham Lincoln in the middle of the night. Also, did Sir Winston Churchill saw Abraham Lincoln in the study. Other guests that show up in uh, paranormal activity that happens in the White House include Andrew Jackson, David Burns, and Abigail Adams. I bet you didn't know that. I don't think that's in your U.S. history books. But again, any place that has been occupied continuously, every person is going to leave a soul energy there. And if you're psychically or soul sensitive, you could pick that up. I found that fascinating. This is from Elizabeth Chase Allen. Backward, turn backward, O oh, time in your flight. Make me a child again just for tonight. That is a little mantra we can say because being a child is to have a childlike trust. In Buddhism, they call it having the beginner's mind. We all need to live our life in truth, having a beginner's mind, with childlike innocence, believing, not being cynical, not being critical, not being overly judgmental, which many of us uh, fall into those traps because we watch the news, especially it's a political season, and we see read the newspapers, and everyone's upset, and they got their knickers in a knot, and they're upset the bridge is not open, or they're upset the bridge isn't built yet. Whatever, 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 we can show up differently. And I think Halloween is a good time to pull back and really put off the phony personality mask and live who you've come to be. You're here by choice. You're not here by some drop of a bucket. You are here by choice. And you can take that into uh, your meditation at times and really evaluate and understand more deeply your soul's destiny. I believe we need to allow Halloween, the spirit of Halloween, to nourish our soul self. Let's have some fun. Let's have a chuckle. Again, let's see who are we showing up as. Are we showing up as a monster in our own life or a monster behavior or attitude or judgments to other people in our life or family or the people next door or, or who, we're talking back to the TV. I know none of you do that, but I've talked back to the TV. Maybe this Halloween we can think differently. And in closing, I'd like to say, clothes make a real difference, but costumes tell the real story. The real story is we can celebrate this Halloween time any way we wish to. 
because we're the Christ. We are divine and we have the divinity within us. So if we want to poke around and wear a mask or play and be some other character for a night or go to a costume party, good for you. Because I think it's something that is healthy for us. And again, I'm not saying going to the negative side uh, where you, you know what I'm talking about. It can be real chainsaw stuff. I'm not saying that. You know, if that's where people want to go, that's their business. But what I'm talking about, the truth understanding of a Halloween is to evaluate, reevaluate the costumes that you're wearing. And we just say, trick or treat and boo! And we say, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. This is the time in our service. We have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. I invite you to take whatever your gift may be and boo. Put a boo in it. A boo is a blessing. Woo. Realize it's alive. Because everything we do is based in energy. We are energy beings. You can go to unityway.com and get our physical address, or you can go to unityway.com and do an electronic donation. But again, boo, put some fun and energy into this gift. We believe in the law of circulation, and we know you will be blessed if you'll join me with our prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And we just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And now I invite you to join with me in our prayer for protection. And we know we're always protected, not because some outside deity is watching over us. We're protected because we've remembered who we are. May this be the Halloween we remember and stand tall in our understanding of our own divinity, that divine image and likeness. If you'll join with me. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. I invite you this upcoming week to think about maybe some places in your life where there's some shadows. Maybe there's some places in your life that you want to put some bright light in to change. Whatever you do, do it with a understanding that you deserve to live in peace. You deserve to have some fun and you deserve to be where you are by right of consciousness. So this Sunday and again this week, I invite you to live from a Halloween consciousness and know that all is well regardless of uh, goblins or uh, anything that's going on or dark clouds. Don't let the pumpkin scare you. Don't let the pumpkin scare you this week and we'll see you next Sunday and I just want to say divine boo. We love you and bless you. I'll see you next week.